Hi guys, welcome back to the Maths Guy. Today we are going to be working on how to convert from fractions to decimals. But first, let's think about when you might see fractions that need to be converted to decimals. The first example might be just fractions themselves, fractions of shapes or fractions of amounts. The other example is in division. We might see when we have a division question like this, 63 divided by 5, that we end up with an answer saying 12 remainder 3. Well, remainder 3 isn't very mathematical. We want to try and change it into a decimal. Therefore, we're going to need to understand how to convert from fractions to decimals there as well. So let's begin. OK, well, what do we need to know before we can begin? Only something very simple, we need to understand that the number 1 or any number can have a whole number or we could put a decimal after it and have an unlimited amount of zeros after our decimal that will not change the value of this number. So we could have the number 1 or 1.0, 1.00, 1.000 or 1.000000 forever and it's not going to change the value of that 1, it is still just a 1. So that's something we need to just bear in mind before we begin. Okay, there's two ways of doing this. There's the long way, where we get to a lot of understanding, and then there's the short way. We're going to do both of them today, but we're going to start with the long way, so we can understand first. Okay, let's have a look at our first fraction then. Let's have a look at 3 fifths, or 3 over 5. Now, let's think about what this fraction actually is. A fraction is a part of a whole, so it's less than 1. So this was saying that if our 1 was chopped into 5, we only have 3 parts of it. OK, so let's begin. So 3 fifths, how do we work it out? Well, we're going to use division to help us today because 3 fifths is actually saying what is 3 divided by 5. Anybody who knows their mathematical symbols will realise that, that a fraction is actually just the same as a division. 3 fifths means 3 divided by 5. So let's put our 3 fifths into a division chart then. So 3 divided by 5. Ooh, I have had a problem straight away. I can't divide 3 by 5 because 3 is smaller than 5. So what do we do? So this is where our place value knowledge is going to be useful and understanding that we can put a decimal and then a 0 and we still have the value of 3. So let's put a decimal here and add a 0 because we need some more digits to help us answer this question. So let's put my 0 here and for a moment I'm going to forget about this decimal point and I'm going to look at this 3.0 as a 30. And I'm going to ask myself, how many 5s are there in 30? Well, we have 6 5s in 30. So I'm going to put my 6 up here, and then I'm going to think, well, 6 times 5 is 30. So now I can subtract 30, which leaves me with 0, which is our magic number, the number we want to make sure we get down to when we're doing division. And am I finished? No, stop. Remember earlier where we ignored the decimal? Well, now we've got to put it back. So let's put our decimal point back, and therefore my answer is 0.6 or 0.6, exactly the same value. So 3 fifths is 0.6. Easy. Let's look at the same question with short division method. So I can have my 3 divided by 5, just like before. But this time I'm going to look at it slightly differently. I'm going to say, how many 5s are there in 3? 0, correct. But this time I have to roll my 3 across to the next column. And I can ask myself, how many 5s are there in 30? 6. Great. Put back my decimal point and I get the same answer, 0.6. OK, let's look at a slightly harder one. Let's have a look at 9 25ths. So we're going to start exactly the same way. I'm going to create my division chart. I'm going to put my 9 inside, and I'm going to put my 25 outside. So my question says 9 divided by 25. How many 25s are there in 9? So let's have a look through the long method again. 9 divided by 25, I can't do. So I'm going to have to add my 0 after my decimal to help me. So I put my zero in place, and now again, I can ignore my decimal just for a moment and ask myself, how many 25s are there in 90? Well, I have three 25s in 90. So I'm going to put my three in that column, and now I can say, well, how many did I just take away from my 90? So I times my three by my 25 gives me 75. So I took 75 away, so I subtract 75 from my 90, and that leaves me with 15. But now I can't divide 15 by 25, so I have to add another row of zeros, and I can bring that zero down to the 15, and now I can ask myself, how many 25s are there in 150? 25s and 150 go six times, so I'll put my six on the answer row, and now I'll work out how many I just took away, so I times my six by the 25, which is 150. 
So from 150, I took 150, that leaves me with the magic zero, the number that we're trying to get down to. Great, so I have 36. Ah, very good. 0.36, don't forget to put back your decimal, or 0 0.36. So 9 25ths as a decimal is 0 0.36. Great job. But let's have a look at that in short division two. So I have nine divided by 25 again, but this time I'm gonna try and ask how many 25s are there in nine? There are zero. Put back my decimal, but I have to roll that nine across the next column. How many 25s in 90? Well, we have three. And how many do I have to roll across? 15. But don't forget to add that next zero, so I actually have 150. How many 25s in 150? That's right, six. So the same answer. 0.36. Okay, let's have a little look at a special situation. Let's have a look at one third, the fraction one over three. So let's set it up as before, one divided by three. But I can't do one divided by three, so I'll add my decimal and I'll add my new zero in the 10th column, and temporarily I'll forget about that point. So now I can ask myself, how many threes are there in 10? Well, I have three threes in 10, so I'll put that three in that column. Okay, and how many out of that 10 did I just take away? Three times three is nine. So I subtracted nine from my original 10, leaving me one. But again, I can't get a group of three out of one. I can't divide one by three. So I'll have to go into my next column, add another zero, bring it down. And my question again says, how many threes are there now in 10? But uh oh, I can start to see a pattern repeating here. We just took threes from 10. So let's see what happens. How many threes are there in 10? Three, put that up here in that column. And how many did I just take away? That's right, nine, leaving me with one. Well, now we're getting into a pattern, aren't we? I was just left with one a minute ago. This is called a recurring decimal. The answer to this would be 0 0.3333333333 forever. It will just recur that three forever. So we have a special symbol that we can put on top of the three to show that this number is gonna be repeated. We can put this little dot here. And by doing that, it shows someone that this number is recurring, rather than having to spend the rest of my life finishing this question. So the answer to what one third as a decimal is 0 0.33. Let's have a look at that in the short division method as well. So I'll put back my division, one divided by three. How many threes are there in one? Zero. Don't forget to put my decimal. And then how many threes are there in 10? Three. How many have we got left over? One. Add that to the next column, don't forget to add my zero, so I have 10 again. How many threes are there in 10? Three. How many left over? One. And we have that same pattern again. So the answer, again, is 0 0.33. Okay, but you're ready for the super easy, super quick method, but doesn't help our maths understanding. We can just use a calculator. So because this is just a simple division question, so three fourths or three quarters is actually three divided by four. So I can just type in three divided by four equals 0 0.75. So if you do happen to have a calculator with you, you can just do this really quickly on a calculator, but remember, it doesn't help our understanding of maths. And I promise there's gonna be those situations where you're without a calculator and you still need to work this out. So it's really important to understand. Let's have a look at another one on the calculator. Let's have a look at what seven elevenths are. So I just do seven divided by 11. So that equals 0 0.636363. So I can see that repeating pattern again, but this time it's the six and the three that are repeating. So I'm gonna put my dots above both of them. Okay guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you want many more videos like this, please check out our website, themathsguide.com, and we'll see you there. See you in another video guys.